Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. We got a special guest today, too, you're going to hear from. It's going to be awesome. Library. We got the New York DFS, the NYDFS. There's a step down, change to policy. You need to know it. We got BlackRock in the news. I trust capital in talks with Ripple. What could that be about? We're going to get into it. Australia, New Zealand's one step closer. And we got this from the Cato Institute. Multipolar world, ladies and gentlemen. You won't believe it. A HSBC and a new retail CBDC pilot with Hong Kong. Does it equal XRP? Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, $1.09 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 0.2%. Careful what we call progress today, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, Bitcoin, 26400 plus, 1621 and change for Ethereum. Tether market cap is $83 billion plus. XRP is $0.49 cent at the number five spot. We're up 1.9% on 24-hour, off by one3 on the seven-day. Let's take a look at this. If you haven't seen this, there was a massive cyber attack in Las Vegas on the MGM properties, wishing all of them the best out there today. And this has been going on for several days now. We even heard just recently that it's still happening to them they have not climbed out of this yet you know uh it's very scary times when you think about all of this going on ladies and gentlemen that's why i'm telling you about miles franklin precious metals where you can buy physical gold have it sent to you directly but you've got to send them an email from what i've provided underneath of this video or call the number that i gave you and tell them to use the code dig gold you get the best prices for precious metals if you use the code dig gold and i tell you with things like that going on this is why i want my own personal alternative to banking because i'm always concerned about bank bail-ins and runs on banks and you can become your own bank by using glint and physically allocated gold that allows you to buy save send and spend real gold instantly with glint like cash it is amazing now i got a special guest here it's Mrs. Backup. Mrs. Backup, how do you feel about owning physical gold and having Glint as your own personal alternative to banking? Well, I think it's awesome, and I sleep better at night knowing that we hold gold and Glint. Don't mess around. Get yours today. Absolutely. Come on in. That's what we're doing. Mrs. Backup bringing the sales pitch home. Damn right. There it is. Check out the affiliates. And here we go right here today. Come on in, John Deaton. The fight continues. We won't stop. We can't stop. It's the library case now. They are appealing the decision that has been coveted so much by the SEC. SEC may have won the battle, but the war is not over, ladies and gentlemen. John Deaton will be settle, uh, sending in his filed notice for appearance on behalf of Naomi Brockwell as amicus curiae. Come on in. I love it right there. I've said this before. John Deaton has single-handedly changed the way the crypto cases are fought forevermore. Courtesy of attorney James Murphy there, met a law man, give him a follow. He rightfully so pulled that out and saw that detail that they, the way that crypto cases will be fought going forward have forevermore been changed because of John Deaton using the ability to be a meekest curé and meekest briefs. I tell you, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it really is. It's forever changed. And here we see changes coming here. Top crypto state regulator stepping down now. This is the New York State Department of Financial Services known as the NYDFS, ladies and gentlemen. That's not all. This here from Eleanor Terrett as well. The NYDFS is set to release changes to its coin listing policy standards today whereby crypto companies operating in New York State will no longer 
be allowed to self-certify the adoption listing of new tokens. Uh-oh. The revoking of self-certification process aims to hold all bit licensees and limited purpose trust companies known as LPTCs to the same DFS approved listing standards and provide additional clarity to the industry plagued by scams. More details to come. Now, you know this has a lot to do with, with the SEC's jurisdictional reach. You can bet on it. And right here is the CEO of Blockchain Association, and she's going to tell you that she's hopeful for a new crypto bill this fall. That means any day, ladies and gentlemen. Take a listen to this clip. Legislation is needed. I think we saw a couple of the senators earlier say the SEC has full authority. It's clear that they don't. And as we've seen throughout the summer, there have been multiple court cases, Ripple, Grayscale, uh, and even Uniswap in a class action lawsuit that basically says that these assets are not always securities and therefore the SEC doesn't have a role to play. But we do want to have some regulation of the crypto markets. And in order to do so, like Senator Lummis said a couple days ago, is that you have to have legislation in place that puts that framework there. And so I think that the work that is going on in the House right now is incredibly important. Um, legislation isn't a process that happens overnight. It takes time. And I think that the um, Chairman McHenry and Chairman Thompson of the two committees are working very hard. Their staffs are working to improve this legislation. And so I'm hopeful and optimistic that we get um, an updated bill to the floor sometime this fall. And, um, you know, if it doesn't happen this fall, then, you know, we're going to keep working on this because over 50 million Americans own crypto assets. And let me tell you, they're not using it uh, to, to commit illicit crimes using <laughs> using these assets. And so I Amen to Kristen Smith, the CEO of Blockchain Association. She just can't say it any better. That's absolutely right. 50 million Americans have exposure and hold crypto assets, and they're not doing anything nefarious with it. And let's get some damn regulation passed. Let's get some legislation passed. That's what we put people on Capitol Hill for. Yeah, imagine that. And then there's this. BlackRock rumored... This is incredible. BlackRock rumored to shift crypto focus from Bitcoin to XRP. Let's get into just a piece of this here. In the ever-evolving cryptocurrency landscape, rumors suggest BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager with over $9 trillion in assets under management, may be reassessing its digital asset strategy. The financial giant is speculated to be considering a shift in focus from Bitcoin, the leading digital currency, to XRP, a digital asset primarily known for its payment protocol. Several factors are believed to be driving this speculated, uh, sh speculated shift, including the changing regulatory environment surrounding cryptocurrencies, advancements in technology, and a possible intention to diversify their digital asset portfolio. While these rumors remain unconfirmed, they could carry substantial implications for the broader, broader digital asset landscape if proven accurate. XRP has been steadily gaining traction in financial circles due to its potential applications in various financial services, particularly in cross-border transactions. A pivot by BlackRock towards XRP could not only increase the digital asset's market value, but could also significantly enhance its credibility within the financial services sector. There you have that. So we need to know more for it to actually be legitimate. But now let's also understand, too, that BlackRock has submitted an application for a spot Bitcoin ETF as well. So don't rule out that they would want to do both. Right. I mean, these are the greediest people on the planet. Let's not do that. But I do want to remind people that Robbie Michnick, to lead the digital asset division for BlackRock was hired from Ripple. <laughs> so there's a tie and BlackRock absolutely knows what XRP's capability truly is. We'll keep watching and talk about knowing what capable is here. What is capable? I trust and Ripple talks. How about this? Check it out from Kevin Maloney from I Trust Capital. Take a listen. You know, we... I've had some great conversations with with Ripple lately. Uh, very sharp group, um, intellectual and financial capital. A lot of skin into the game. I think there's a lot of credibility in the marketplace. We we think there's good alignment with Ripple. 
we've had some uh we we started this company uh, off of ripple we we rode the early crypto wave and uh when we started the platform in 19 we we were lucky on timing and we built it off the ripple com uh, community so 2021 was a really good time the community xrp community is what put us on the map there you go and uh you know uh some social media platforms like dai helped as well this is the early humble days, uh, but lately Ripple's been making some acquisitions in the space. I think it's a great move for them to pick up uh, Fortress Trust. I think it also says to the regulators, hey, we, we take this seriously. We want to do the right thing. We want a qualified custodian. And as we know, the regulators want all institutions to hold digital assets through a qualified custodian. At some point that may go down to the individual level. We think it's an excellent wrapper to have a qualified custodian uh, custody of the assets for individuals. And that's something we do really well with Fortress Trust. And now we'll be doing that well with Ripple. So we're excited about that. A lot of alignment. A lot of good alignment. Take a listen to with that Fortress again. Trust. And now we'll be doing that well with Ripple. So we're excited about that. A lot of alignment. There you have it. A lot of alignment. I, I tell you something. This is amazing to me. Uh, just seeing all of this growth take place. And listen, shout out to Digital Asset Investor and myself. And that's where that XRP community support came from. And I am very proud of the work that's been done in iTrust Capital. And shout out to the CEO, Kevin Maloney, for tipping his hat towards all of us. And they always remember where they've come from. That's a beautiful thing. You know, no matter how big they've gotten. And by the way, iTrust is a billion dollar big, unicorn big. OK, and if people are wondering what we do around here, we build companies and we help bring good people together with good audience members that are looking for great services. And that is a combination that will never, ever end. No doubt about it. Take a look at this. Xi, Jin, Xi Jinping is done with the established world order when he did not show up at the recent G20 summit here. Now, I'm showing you that because we know that there has been advancements around the world with BRICS coalition growing and expanding. Saudi Arabia is going to join in, in January of 24 and Iran, United Arab Emirates and, and a few other countries. It's going to continue to expand, but so is the CBDC pilot programs around the world. And this is what we're seeing here stable coins as well australia new zealand banking group is one step closer to launching its bank issued stable coin after the bank successfully executed a test transaction on Chainlink's cross chain interoperability protocol I wanted to let you know that and let's take a look at this here shout out to subjective views give them a follow uh, multipolar world and a level playing field. I want you to listen to this Cato Institute clip here, which is obviously a think tank, and you need to hear what she's getting ready to say to you about the ever-changing world we're moving towards. And tell me if this doesn't sound like a real situation of what XRP was designed to do as a bridge, a world reserve bridge currency. That doesn't mean a one world currency. That means a one, that means a world reserve bridge currency doesn't threaten the other dollars of the world. Take a listen. B. I mean, our the U.S. markets are definitely the envy. They still are, and and there are a lot of reasons for that. One is also the you know the the infrastructure that we've talked a little bit about too. That the U.S. and U.S. companies in public-private partnership and with a lot of private companies leading that globally are are the underlying infrastructure of the global economy. And so that is something that we for. Uh, national security interests for U.S. competitiveness interests would not want to lose. The U.S. dollar being, again, you know, really the, the reserve currency of the world. Uh, already you hear all kinds of conversations in many corners of the globe, which I know happened in, in the history. It's, it's happened. It happened in the 70s. It's happened a lot of time period. Um, but generally speaking, the U.S. dollar was not challenged uh, in the way that People are talking about it now in foreign mm -hmm. capitals. And so those are issues that, that should concern us. And again, not just financial infrastructure, but the technology infrastructure and communications infrastructure of the world, like you know where the, where the internet uh, was born and how it has evolved. So I think those, those are things that we do need to have uh, first and foremost in our minds. And, and it is definitely a motivating factor for members of Congress, which is exciting. And the entrepreneurs, 
and yeah, the entrepreneurs as well, and the companies like Ripple and the digital assets like Stellar and XTC and XRP and HBAR. I mean, the list goes on and Chainlink and Algo and Quant, right? I mean, you know, this is what we're talking about here. A real effort is taking place, whether it's the BRICS coalition or whether it's other countries developing their own CBDCs and with the intent of using their own dollars over the U.S. dollar more and more and more. De-dollarization is continuing and it will be a transition of quite some time, I believe. However, HSBC to start the EHKD retail CBDC payments trial. Well, if you remember, and I want to show you in highlight here, Ripple was selected to showcase real estate asset tokenization solution as a part of the Hong Kong Monetary Authority's inaugural EHKD pilot program. Uh huh. So now you have to wonder when it comes to this new program with retail CBDC payments trial, will XRP be involved in this as well? The bank will use distributed ledger technology to simulate programmable money and instant settlement for retail payments. Around 200 participants will receive the hypothetical EHKD to spend within a week at five campus merchants such as cafes. They uh, can also receive rewards as a digital token. The findings will help validate the effectiveness of a digital currency in retail. Public wide type scenarios given the richness of the payment ecosystem in HK. So Hong Kong doing a lot of testing, ladies and gentlemen. HSBC is also one of the participants in Embridge for cross-border CBDC payments. When While many uh, CBDC projects are experiments, Embridge is moving forward to production. Embridge is moving forward to production. Participants include BIS, HKMA, Hong Kong Monetary Authority, and central banks of China, Thailand, and the UAE. Isn't this interesting? Additionally, HSBC has participated in trials of the regulated liability networks that we've told you about are so important in both the United States and the UK. RLN aims to combine CBDCs and bank deposit tokens with the same Network. <laughs> Remember when James Wallace said, I played it a bunch of times, that Embridge and the XRP Ledger is one of the models of Embridge that's being studied by the BIS, where the native tokens on the protocol on the Embridge are not XRP, but the CBDCs. XRP just happens to be the bridge that's there to use when needed. Come on in. You know, I look at all of these things and I have to wonder, is it all connected? Are we all just crazy? I don't think so. If you haven't watched the video from this morning on Ripple's on-demand liquidity and the Ripple liquidity hub now opening up to expand in other countries as well as adding USDC and USDT for the on and off ramps, the two biggest on and off ramps into the crypto digital asset space. You tell me what's going to happen. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe for me. Let's grow this channel. Let's keep it going. We got a lot of people. Tell everybody that doesn't know about this space to get in here and start listening because real wealth is made in a time like this. And if you haven't checked out the Digital Perspectives Mastermind Group, I can tell you I'm getting messages all week long about the people who are changing their lives inside of this group. And you will find out remarkable information that you cannot find out from this channel. Check out that link as well. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.